Hey, what's up guys? I want to talk a little bit about the 6 liter power stroke, just a couple of the basics, a little overview of what goes on under the hood. Uh, hopefully this is informative and you enjoy. Alright, so this is the 6 liter power stroke in all its glory in the Ford Super Duty chassis. Um, I will start over on this side and just work my way around, pointing out various things in the engine bay um, for the beginners, the, the people that are just getting into the power stroke. Uh, so starting on this side, uh, this is aftermarket. I put that in myself. Uh, this is a coolant filtration kit. What it does is it skims off a little bit of the coolant every time you know it cycles through and it filters it. Uh, there's you know little contaminants. People say when they flush their cooling system, a lot of grit comes out. Uh, this is designed to catch that grit. You shouldn't need it if you have. Uh, the extended life coolant like the cat ELC but it, it's good to have on hand I like to keep my coolant nice and clean so peace of mind right there uh, we got one of the two batteries and over in this corner right here is your starter signal wire so if you want to you know crank it over by hand maybe you want to build oil pressure or listen to the compression you disconnect that and tap it on your positive terminal and that would crank your engine over. Over here, um, because diesels don't create vacuum and the climate control is controlled by vacuum, it uh, it needs a vacuum pump and a vacuum reservoir. So so that's what, it, what that is. I made another video on the vacuum routing, um, so you can go check that out if you have any questions. Uh, we got some AC stuff over here blower motor. I believe this is the AC evaporator. I believe the heater core is actually under the dash. So you can see that this is a, a vacuum actuated valve to open and close the heater core flow. So if you if you have one of those just hanging out and you wonder, you're wondering where it goes, that's where it goes. But there's the heater lines going into the firewall to your heater core. Um, wiring harness bits, your map sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, right there, and that just goes to the intake manifold. Oil fill cap, of course, trans dipstick, uh, the intercooler piping coming off the turbo, so this is the pipe that goes from the turbo down to the intercooler. Uh, be sure you check the boots on your truck. When I got my truck, this was torn slightly, so I had to get that replaced. There's the turbo right there, variable geometry turbo. That's what gives the 6.0 the whistle at idle that a lot of other diesels do not have. I have a upgraded downpipe. Stock is a little bit smaller. Uh, let me get up on here. So down there would be your EGR cooler. And that, that goes to your up pipe, which is right back there. You can't see it very well. But that's where your EGR cooler would go. And what that does is it recirculates exhaust gases into the intake manifold to um, control emissions. Alternator, these things are kind of underpowered. People suggest going with a upgraded unit. Uh, plenty of forum suggestions on that. There's a drive belt. If you need to change your alternator or anything, you just pull on the belt and the auto tensioner down there will flex and then you can lock it into place. There's the EGR valve itself. If you unplug it when you delete it, you could potentially set off a um, soft code. It won't show up as like a solid check engine light code, at least it shouldn't, but it would register in the computer's memory. Oil filter cap. If you have anything taller, then it's probably an aftermarket cap. I would suggest only running Motorcraft filters and cap. 
Same with the fuel filter, the upper secondary fuel filter. Only run Motorcraft on that. Here's the Ficum down there. That's what drives your injectors. Mass airflow sensor, coolant degas bottle. If you're looking at getting a 6.0, make sure you check around here. See if there's any residual coolant that could be indicating a head gasket or an EGR issue if it's pushing coolant out of the bottle. So just keep that in mind. There's a Y pipe down there. Right there that likes to get old and brittle and crack a lot. So that is a common failure point if you're dumping coolant out of the driver's side. Air filter. People on the forum say it's good up to like five or 600 horsepower. I'm pushing stock numbers, so good enough for me. Brake master cylinder. Like I said, diesels don't create vacuum, so the brake is powered by hydro boost, which is off of your power steering pump. So your power steering and your brakes are run off the same hydraulic system. So if you lose power steering, you probably are gonna lose brakes and that's, uh, that's no good. So make sure your power steering system is uh, topped off and up to the task. ABS block, fuse block. I see a lot of questions on what these wires are right here. They seemingly just end and they're just cut. Uh, these are actually just wires that are pre-installed at the factory so that you can tap into them and go through the firewall. That's all they are is just open-ended open -ended wires that go through the firewall so you don't have to run your own wires in certain cases. Back over here, got the radiator. If you're changing out your radiator or messing around here at all, be sure you take special care working with this. This barb fitting does like to snap off really easily. Uh, there is a fix that you can do. You can tap the threads and put a brass barbed fitting on it, or you can just get another radiator or get a aluminum radiator online and you won't have, have that brittle breaking issue. Um, the fuel housing right here is where I tapped a fuel pressure gauge. So it's good to monitor your fuel pressure. That can um, tell you part of the story if you're having any sort of misfiring or rough running issues. Uh, this is the plastic intake tube. So this is the intake to the intake manifold. That is the plastic tube that runs to the uh, intercooler. So turbo intercooler to the intake. So the 03, 04 uh, model year trucks have a more traditional boot with metal tube kind of like back over there. This, this works fine. It's a pain to get on and off just because it's such a tight fit. And in some cases it splits at the seam under higher boost or if it's just worn out. So upgrade it or replace it up to you. I'm still on the stock one that came with the truck. No problem so far, but that could be a potential um, issue that could put you on the side of the road. So just keep that in mind. Uh, thermostat housing right down there. Pretty simple to replace if your thermostat has gone bad. Fan, fan down there. It's a electrically controlled fan clutch. Is the harness for it right there. Uh, the fan kicks on full blast when the ECU detects a certain number of parameters. I forget what it is exactly, but it's uh, something to do with coolant temperature, intake air temperature sensor, perhaps throttle percentage, and a couple other things. It It's a common upgrade to delete the electronic fan clutch and go with a 7.3 power stroke fan clutch like out of a 97. Uh, you need a adapter for your water pump nose uh, and you need the fan clutch but then the six liter fan will will bolt on to all of that 
and from what I've been reading, uh, you pretty much never have overheating issues again. I kind of want to do it, but um, haven't really had the need to. I don't really tow too heavy through the mountains, but if you tow a lot and you go through the mountains, um, it's not a bad investment to make. I, I heard it keeps your truck cool pretty much all the time. Right under the oil filter housing is the oil cooler. There's like a big square in the center of the block within the V. So like a big square um, kind of cut out of the, of the center and that's where the oil flows in from the low pressure oil pump. So the oil cooler has coolant running through it, it has oil running through it, and it also sits within a big puddle of oil, kind of like an ice cube in a drink. And that cools off the oil before it goes through to the high pressure oil pump. And from there, the high pressure oil pump, which sits kind of underneath the turbo, uh, distributes the high pressure, pressure oil with branch tubes to the high pressure oil rails. And that's what fires your injector. The high pressure oil, it, it fires the injectors, which kind of act like a syringe. So the high pressure oil would kind of be like your hand pushing down on the plunger of a syringe. And the diesel coming out of the tip is at a higher pressure um, because of the smaller nozzle. I don't know the exact science behind it, but the high pressure oil fires the, the injectors, which inject the diesel in at an even higher pressure. Huey injection for you. So if, you're, if, if your oil temperature compared to your coolant temperature is more than 15 or 20, 20 degrees, it's uh, more than likely your oil cooler just getting clogged up with um, actually a lot of the stuff that this catches. There's a lot of like silicate or silicone silicate. There, there's some component in the coolant that over time after being heated and cooled, heated and cooled, um, there's some components that drop out of the coolant and clog clog up small passages. Uh, that That's one thing that the coolant filtration is really good for is keeping your coolant clean so your small passages do not get clogged up. But over time, um, if you don't have that and you don't have top quality coolant, your oil cooler passages will clog up. It won't cool the oil as efficiently and your temperature difference, your deltas, will increase and anything over like 15 or 20 is um, suspect and you can either back flush it or you can replace it. I went I went ahead and replaced mine so mine's pretty much brand new so no worries for there no worries there for me. Back around to the passenger side valve cover there's a big old thing on here with a black plug and a green plug I'm not sure if it's a glow plug relay or a module, um, but it has something something to do with your glow plugs. So keep that if you want to operational glow plugs. On the passenger valve cover is your ICP sensor, injection control pressure sensor. If you have a 05 to 07 truck, if you have a 03 to 04, it's back behind the turbo with your IPR, injection pressure regulator valve. So that's one superior um, attribute of the 05 to 07. ICP sensor is way easier to replace if it um, has any sort of issue. Down here, it's your fuel feed to each head. That banjo bolt looking thing. One for each head. Can't really see it all that well from this side, but there's one of those on each on each head, and they just go to your fuel filter housing. If you peek down, you can see I'm still on head bolts. If you have a question on whether or not a truck has been studded or not, you can look along the bottom edge of the uh, of a head and if it has bolts you're on head bolts if it has a stud and a nut uh, looks like it's been studded so that's uh, 
you know, kind of a way to verify if someone claims their truck has been studded or not, you can go ahead and take a look for yourself. I think I've mentioned everything worth mentioning at this point. Just kind of made my way around the engine bay. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to me ramble on about the six liter power stroke. Uh, this was just a brief overview of what's under the hood. Uh, I could have missed a few things here and there. Uh, everything was just off the top of my head. So if you have any comments or questions as to uh, something I missed or any questions on what uh, what this is or what that is, go ahead and leave it, leave it down below and I will uh, either make a vid or respond to your comment. Anything I can do to help. Anyways, thanks for watching. Sub to the channel if you haven't. Give the video a like if you liked it. Hit the notification bell and thanks for watching.